Hello children, welcome back. In the previous lecture, we had seen that how a man was playing with the author's bicycle and he had lost the bearings, the little balls from his wheel. He then said that while he was about it, he would see to the chain for me and at once began taking off the gear case. So he said that now that he had opened the bicycle, all the parts were out, he would also have a look at the chain. First, he, he played with the wheel and now he wanted to play with the chains. And before he could say anything, he, was, he had started working with the gear case. I did try to dis dissuade him from that. I told him what an experienced friend of mine had once said to me solemnly. So he tried to stop him, that please don't do that. And he tried to tell him that one of his friend, what one of his friend had told him about the bicycles. If anything goes wrong with your gear case, sell the machine and buy a new one. It comes cheaper. So one of the author's friend had said that in case anything goes wrong with, wrong with your gear case, don't even bother to repair it. Just get a new bicycle because that would be a lot cheaper. He said, people talk like that who understand nothing about machines. Nothing is easier than taking off a gear case. So he says, he said that only people who don't know about machines would say something like that. It is very easy to take off the gear case. I had to confess he was right. In less than five minutes, he had the gear case in two pieces, lying on the path and was groveling for screws. So he had to agree that removing the gear case was very easy because in less than five minutes the gear case was out of the bicycle and he had unscrewed everything. He said it was always a mystery to him the way screws disappeared. So now he's talking to himself. He said that it was always a mystery to him that how these screws keep disappearing. Common sense continued to whisper to me. So in his subconscious mind he was thinking that stop him before he does any more mischief. You have a right to protect your own property from the ravages of a lunatic. Take him by the scruff of the neck and kick him out of the gate. So he was thinking that he should not tolerate this anymore. He does not know anything. He is simply playing with his bicycle and he should hold him by the neck and throw him out of his gate. But I am weak where it comes to hurting other people's feelings. But the author was good hearted, kind hearted. He did not like hurting other people's feelings. And I let him muddle on. So he did not say anything to the man. He gave up looking for the rest of the screws. So he had lost some screws and he was looking for it, but after some time he gave up. He said screws had a knack of turning up when you least expected them and that now he would see to the chain. So he said that they would eventually find the screws and now he was going to do something about the chain. He tightened it till it would not move. Next he loosened it until it was twice as loose as it was before. So what did he do first? He tightened the chains. So much so that it did not move at all. Then he loosened it so much that it was twice as loose as its normal form would be. Then he said we had better think about getting the front wheel back into its place again. So then he said that now let, let the chain be. Now we should get the front wheel back to its position. I held the fork open and he worried with the wheel. At the, at the end of 10 minutes I suggested he see to the chain and that I should handle the wheel and we changed places. So in the beginning the author hold the fork, held the fork and the other man tried to fix the wheel but it was in vain. They were not able to do anything. So then the author said that you please see to the chain and I will handle the wheel. At length we did get the thing into position and the moment it was in position he burst out laughing. So at the end they did get everything in place and then the man suddenly started laughing. I said, what's the joke? He said, well, I'm an ass. So when he started laughing, the author asked that why are you laughing? What is the joke? So he said that he thought that he is an ass, means he is a fool. It was the first thing he had said that ma made me respect him. I asked him what led him to the discovery. So he said that this is the first thing that he said correctly. And I respected him for that. And I asked him that how did you come to know that you are a fool? Because the author had already realized that he was an ass, that he was a fool. He said, we have forgotten the balls. So then he said that we have forgotten to put those little, bo little balls back. I looked for my hat. It was lying topsy-turvy in the middle of the path. He was of a cheerful disposition. So 
suddenly he realized that he had put those little balls in his hat and his hat was lying on the road he said well we must put them all back all we can find and trust to trust to providence so he said that well now we might have lost some balls but whatever we have we should put them back we found 11 so earlier they had found 16 now they found only 11 we fixed 6 on one side and 5 on the other side and half an hour later the wheel was in its place again so again they removed the wheel put the bearings 6 on one side 5 on the other and then they put the wheel back into its place it need hardly be added that it really did wobble now a child might have noticed it he said it would do for the present but now when you saw it the bicycle you could tell that now it has started shaking earlier it was not shaking and this man started playing with it so now it had actually started wobbling even a child who doesn't know anything about bicycle would be able to say that so now what next what does the author do we will see in our next lecture till then read till here i will see you in next lecture bye bye